I think steroids are as American as apple pie. Dang it! You're watching Muscle Sport Magazine. Fuckos. Okay, I'm back. Um, Alright, I told you guys to my last video to put like, you know, like questions down and shit. And I've been reading all your comments, all your questions. There's a lot of good questions. Uh, I'm going to try to answer some of them. But, you know, I, I just want to say a few things, alright? First of all, one of the guys was telling me like he had cancer. And if he was asking me if like the bodybuilding lifestyle, uh, you know, like, because he was a bodybuilder, he said, you know, I lived the bodybuilding lifestyle, ate a lot of red meat and all this other stuff, and he asked me if I thought that maybe that's why he got cancer. And, you know, there's a lot of bodybuilders who are dying of fucking liver bullshit and kidney bullshit, uh, and, you know, Derek Anthony was one of my friends, you know, uh, you know, who, who passed away, uh, I mean, I know a lot of guys, I know NASA, you know, it's, it's, it's countless guys, but, the bottom line of what I'm trying to tell you is, do I think that the steroid and the bodybuilding lifestyle causes cancer? No, I don't. I do think, though, that overuse of massive amounts of steroids, I shouldn't talk because i got to be honest with you guys, I took a lot of fucking shit, a lot. But, I got fucking arrested and I sat in jail, so I, I had like a f about five years I think I took it. That's it, five years. Uh, when, when I started, it was natural. It was a natural bodybuilder. And then I took it. I mean, I went insane. I put 100 pounds on. So, you know, I took a lot of shit. Um, and uh, mostly, uh, you want to know what I took? I took mostly equipoise, testosterone propionate, testosterone sipionate, testosterone inente. Uh I was taking steroid shit because that's what I got. I, lo I loved fucking uh, Sustamon 250, D-Balls Anadrol, uh, this uh, Sten. I like Sten. It was a dirty fucking Mexican drug. But I like dirty Mexican women. My girlfriend's a dirty Mexican woman. So, you know, I, I, you know. Anyway. So I like a lot of androgens. I'm an androgen guy. I didn't like that guy. I do take that I did take that guy back then. Because uh, I had it. So I would take it. Uh, you know what fucked me up, though? I'll tell you what fucked me up. Uh, injectable D-ball. That fucked me up bad. Uh, ref, uh, Reforbid B. Reforbid B fucked me up, man. That shit used to have like vitamins in, like B vitamins and stuff. And you shoot that shit, it would come up in your breath, and you could smell it. And the fumes, I used to get almost like I'm gonna throw up, like nauseous. It fucked me up. Uh, I mean, it made me grow, but I didn't like it. I didn't feel good on it or any shit. I felt great on Sten. Um, you know. But regardless, my main drugs were propionate, and because I like that fast-acting test and. Equipoise. Those are my two favorite drugs. Built my cycle. Around about blah, 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 blah. anyway, that for five years, and I, I put on 100 pounds. Now, these other guys have been taking steroids since they were young, since some since they were teenagers, some since their early 20s, and did it did it, they did it for years. And what happens is, if you do that and you take massive amounts, you're putting a really bad fucking you know. You're putting a lot of pressure on your, your your kidneys and your liver, so they usually when you hear these guys are dying or died from liver or kidney or whatever, it usually it's because of the stress. It's like a cirrhosis of the liver. It's not a cancer per se. So you know, so I really think that it, you know the cirrhosis of the liver, you know, is a real problem for guys taking a lot of steroids. Uh, you know, it's a possible problem. Uh, I do think that the kidneys, you know, uh, also that's another one, the kidneys and the liver. Uh, the other thing is, is that a lot of these fucking guys, bro, a lot of these guys fucking with the insulin. Now that's some of the questions you guys are asking about insulin. Should I be, you know, how many I used, to, dude? I, I'm going to tell you something. I never did insulin, so I can't sit here and give you advice. Now, I know what guys do and what I'm told, and, uh, you know, I know what some of the gurus tell you, some of the coaches, some of the personal trainers, you know, you all got the, I, I know, uh, I'm not going to give out insulin fucking, I've never done it myself. I have a friend that died from insulin. He, 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 he one time, I don't know if I, I might have told you the story, I don't know, but I'll tell it again anyway. One time, him and I were in a, we, we went to a dying, we were in a dying race smack in the middle of Manhattan, New York City. And he's fucking, he's sitting there and he's putting sugar in it, in his fucking water. 
And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing that for? He goes, well, you know, I just finished working on it. I took, a, I took a shot of insulin in the car, and now I need some fucking sugar. I'm like, what? You know, why would you do that? So he proceeded to tell me a story. And he said to me, you're not going to believe this, but I was, I just finished working out one day. I got to the house, and I took a shot of insulin. And he said, I was cooking dinner on a stove, and the next thing I know, I wake up and I'm in the hospital. And he said to me that his girlfriend came home and found him on the floor with food burning on a stove. Because he had fainted and went into like an insulin shock coma or whatever. Doesn't remember any of it. So she called 911. He was taken to the hospital. He, he woke up like a day or two later in intensive care. That's what insulin can do to you if you don't know what you're doing. Well, anyway, fast forward about eight years later. I get a phone call. He was found dead. Same thing. He was taking shots of insulin. He found him laying on his staircase with a fucking, with a uh, iced tea in his hand. I guess he had sugar in the iced tea and he was trying to get that sugar in him, but he fainted and that went into a coma and died. For bodybuilding. Dude, for bodybuilding. Now, let me just tell you something, okay? If you're not a pro bodybuilder competing in the Mr. Olympia, you got some fucking pair of balls even thinking of doing insulin. To walk around and be Mr. Mall, Mr. fucking Jones Beach, or whatever the fuck you're walking around is, you're out of your fucking mind. Jones Beach is here in New York. But, come on guys. I mean, really? I mean, I know you want to be big, that bad, but put in the fucking work. Come on, put in the work. Right? I train 23 years natural. You don't need no fucking insulin. Don't ask me insulin questions. I, 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 I know a little bit, okay? Not enough from a, my experience. I never did it, so I can't give you my experience. If I did it, I'd be able to give you my experience. But I, I can't, and I, I only know what guys tell me and book knowledge. But to be honest with you, I, I don't think I would, even if I was going for Mr. Olympia, I don't know if I would try that shit. I, don't, I just don't like it. And there's a lot of people who believe that that's why there's extended guts. It's not really the GH, it's the insulin. All right? And, it, and, and it, insulin also causes a lot of visceral fat, which is the fat that's under. Here's, your, here's the layer. That's your stomach wall. Then there's a layer of fat that's in between the stomach wall and the organs and everything. It's the, you know, that visceral fat also, you know, pushes the stomach out. I just tell you, I don't know how, who, what's what anymore. I don't know what to fucking believe. I only know what I can tell you from my experience. And I don't want to give you guys any, like, there's certain things that I think you should stay away from. And one of them is insulin. The other is like DNP. I had my friend's girlfriend died from, from taking DNP. All right? So I'm not going to sit here and tell you how to do it because if you kill yourself, you know, I don't want anybody saying, well, they listen to that asshole, me, you know? It's a fucking being a Momo, bro, because you don't need that shit. Unless you're competing in Mr. Olympia, you don't need that shit. If you're just some guy who wants to get bigger, get more jack, live the bodybuilding lifestyle, you're good with a little test, some fucking other shit, a little some anabolics are fine, but don't go crazy. What, what's the point? For what? So you can walk around, if you think you're going to look like Branch Warren, it ain't going to happen. All right? Let's get back to what the fuck I was talking about. So anyway, the guy was asking me about the cancer. Let me tell you something about cancer, okay? It's the look of the draw, the roll of the dice. In some cases, it's hereditary. My mother died of pancreas cancer. I shit my brains out thinking about that every day. My mother died young of pancreas cancer. My uncle, but on the other side of the family, my father's side. His uncle, my grandfather's brother, just died two years ago, three years ago, two or three years ago, I don't know what the fuck he died, two, but yeah, two years ago. And he, he was three weeks away from his 100th birthday. It was fine, bro, it was fine, sharp as a tack, was outside, used to dig tree, dig fucking holes in the lawn and, you know, plant trees and everything, he was fine. He tripped in a hole that he dug in a garden and he cracked his head off of a fucking rock. That's what killed him. We had his birthday fucking big 100th birthday party planned for him. 
He died because he hit his head on a rock. If he didn't hit his head on a rock, that fucker would be alive today. Sorry, that's my uncle. You know, I could talk like that. That's way, you know. He'd be about a hundred too. Point, the point I'm trying to make to you is he ate fucking pasta every day. Bread. Pfft, a lot of bread and a lot of pasta every day. Cereal in the morning. Okay? He ate meatballs, sausages, pork. He ate fucking cookies and candy and Italian fucking, you know, little Italian fucking, like, pastries and shit. He lived to be a hundred fucking years old. Three weeks, come on, three weeks. It would have been a hundred. He was killed by a rock. He ate shit. My mother... Who died in her 60s, 60, just turned 68 and then died, died a month later. My mother ate, was almost, was pretty much a vegan except she, she ate organ meats. What I meant by that is she ate liver, she ate kidneys, I know that's fucking disgusting. And she ate a lot of fish, you know, that's what my mother ate. She ate good, she was the best eater I ever was around, you know. I remember we were kids. She'd make us eat like big bowls of, like fucking string beans. I know a lot of you like that. I don't like that shit. I can eat them for all, but I don't like them cooked. Like burp, 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 with the gag reflux, but string beans, whatever the fuck, Brussels sprouts, all the shit, you know, spinach. I like spinach. I like spinach raw, but cooked. She didn't put no butter on it. You had to eat it fucking just like boiled spinach. It tastes like, I don't know, but anyway. So she would, she would make a big fucking bowl of that. And me, my father, my sister, she would go out. She had a big bowl for herself. And she would go into the kitchen. She'd always forget something. And we'd all scrape our fucking plates into our bowl. And when she'd come back out, she'd sit down and she'd look around. And she'd be like, wow, you guys ate all your spinach. We'd be like, yeah, you know, <laughs> ate our spinach. You know, meanwhile, we'd fucking scrape it in her plate. You know, that's the way it was, you know. The only thing is she knew, though, not to push that liver and shit, you know, fucking on none of us. Kidneys, fucking organ meats, I don't know, you know, she, that's the way she grew up. You know, she didn't, you know, my mother's like, you know, old-fashioned, you know. They don't drink the flu, you know, they don't drink while they eat. They drink after you eat. My mother was very, you know, one McGavone. Now, I had my hand, you know, we, I ate with my fucking hands. My mother would be sitting at one hand, you know, on her lap and the fork and knife. My mother was a lefty, so, no. So, but I'm just saying, she died early. So, here's a woman who ate all vegetables, organ meats, fish, right? Was really good, took supplements and all that shit. She made it to fucking 68. One month into her 68th birthday. Here's my uncle, who ate dog shit every fucking day of his life, was sharp as a tack. Was not sick. Would have lived to be, who fucking knows, 120. But he fucking tripped in a hole and hit a fucking head on his, hit his head on a rock. Okay? So who knows? So the point I'm trying to make is, is a little bit of testosterone or something like that going to fucking cause you to get, you know, cancer? Probably not, you know what I mean? I, I, you know, I, I, I can't sit here and tell you f definitively. I don't have fucking scientific proof. But I can tell you this. For five years, I blasted that shit. A lot of it. I did it fucking almost every other day. That's why, you know, people, oh, he got sent all of this. I didn't fucking do no symptom. I could be live five was the case. I could look like that now and I don't. Okay? But I, I did shoot. I fucking, I shot the fucking testosterone in there. You know what I mean? I shot whatever I could. Everywhere. Why? Because... I had no place to do it, and I was doing it frequent. It's near the end of there. But the bottom line is what I'm trying to tell you guys is, you know, I, I, I think you're going to be all right. You're not going to get the fucking cancer from taking this shit. All right? The bottom line is we don't know. We don't know. Now, another thing is, I got a guy asking me if my fucking shoulder width is from steroids. No, I was born with wide shoulders. Okay? Like Big Rammy was born with wide shoulders. I saw him standing next to Phil Heath and all the time. I'm talking about like they're right in front of me. His Phil and his, his fucking, his Big Rammy. And it just, just looked like a kid standing next to a man. Now even though Phil beats him in the Mr. Olympia, that's because of 
you know, you, you know, the muscles, the structure, the bellies, the roundness, the hardness, the whole fucking presentation. But the bottom line is, you can't build shoulder width. Could you improve your shoulder width? Absolutely. Will steroids improve it? Absolutely. You shoot the, sh you shoot your delt, your delt comes out more, you get caps on your delt. But if you don't have wide shoulders, bro, you can do all the fucking shots in the world. You can do all the side laterals and all that shit. It's clavicles. Come on, didn't you go to school with kids? Maybe this kid in school, you call him Moose. Or something like that. Kid was, why my fucking son is wider than I am? You see him, he's fucking broad like a motherfucker. I'm proud of that kid, though. Army intelligence. Somebody in his family had to have some fucking intelligence. I'm not going to say too much because he's, you know, he's in a, he has an elite position. But, anyway, you know, I'm just saying, like, the clavicles. You get wide clavicles. I grew up with guys, you know, they were fat. Some guys were fat, but they called them moose because they had these really broad shoulders and shit, you know. You know what I'm talking about. That's the thing you can't do. It's like narrow hips. I have narrow hips. You get a guy that's naturally got thick, wide hips. He can squat like a motherfucker, right? Because he's got that load, that center of gravity with those wide hips. You can't narrow wide hips, you know. You can... You can Lose a little weight and make your waist look smaller, but you the bone structure's bone structure, man. Alright? So you're asking me these questions, I'm telling you. Guys, listen to me. I'm fucking talking. I've been doing this since 1972. 1972. I've been in the gym with Arnold. Again. We didn't train together, no, we weren't workout partners and none of that shit. But he was right next to me. And I watched him train. And I would talk to him every once in a while, you know, but I would be like, <laughs> you know, I was like all amped up, you know, it was a long time ago. The bottom line is, I know my shit. Okay? I get guys, you're also asking me about training frequency. Frequency meaning, you know, should I train each body part once a week? Should I train each body part twice a week? How should I split it? These are things that only you can answer. If you had Dorian Yates sitting here, he'd tell you to do each body part once a week, do like five sets, you know, failure and all that. He'd do this shit. I totally disagree with him, man. Back in the 70s, guys used to train each body part two to three times a week, high volume. High volume. I did too. I got my best gains out of training each... Each body part. I did. I like to do my arms together. I didn't like to know my biceps were pumped when my triceps were soft and mushy. So I would do bice and tries one day. I did chest, back, and shoulders another day. I know that's a lot of work, but that's the way I did it. And then legs. And then it would repeat. Uh, I actually started off with uh, chest, back, and shoulders on Mondays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Fridays. Biceps and triceps. And legs on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And you get to forms and calves and all that shit in there if you want. You know what I'm saying? Like that. But what I'm saying, you know, and abs. Now, guys, guys, listen to me. Abs. You got to be careful with abs. If you're on steroids and you train your abs too much, too hard with resistance, with a lot of weight, you know what's going to happen? Your fucking, your waist is going to get bigger. It's not going to get smaller. It's going to get bigger. Because you're your abdominal muscle is no different from your bicep. If using resistance can make your bicep bigger, what do you think it's going to do to your abdominal wall? And if you're taking steroids, you're going to have that big, thick weight. Dude, I, I didn't want to say it, but I've been some, next to some of the Mr. Olympias, man. You know what I mean? And I'm not talking about Ronnie Coleman either. Well, I've been next to some of the Mr. Olympia standing right next, you know, like, with me, we're at dinner together, is what I really, you know. And even in clothes, I'm looking like, holy fuck, bro, his waist is this fucking wide. You know, 40 inch ripped waist doesn't look good. I don't care, man. And a lot of these guys got big fucking waists up close. They're huge. And it's not just the whole fucking gut blow, but I'm telling you, you do a lot of ab work. You gotta do abs. I would say do abs every other day, but do them just enough to keep them sharp. Don't fucking add resistance. You don't need to put like 10, 45 pound plates into all that. That's asinine. Okay? You just need to keep them sharp. If they're not fucking popping, lose the fat, you momo. That's the problem. You momo's got fat there. So you think by sitting there fucking doing that shit? Come on. I'm answering some of your questions, guys. Come on. Give me a fucking break. I'm going to do better videos. You got to give me a break. Dude, I, I, I'm fucking running around back and forth with my daughter's college. You, you have no idea. You know what I mean? Okay? I'm not even going to get into that. 
but regardless, I'm over here, I'm trying to help you with some questions, I'm gonna, you know, these guys ask, I'm looking at the fucking right here, look at the fucking computer, but you can see it on my glasses, that's the computer right there, okay, you know, just a few little questions, I mean, you guys ask, there's some fucking really in-depth shit, you know, should I be eating red meat or not eating red meat, you know, one guy asked me about red meat, and he asked me, well, I get bigger, faster, stronger on red meat, but should I be eating it? You know what I mean? I, I feel better when I eat red meat than I do when I eat, you know, eggs, chicken. And, dude, if you're feeling better, then there's the answer to your question. I like red meat. I don't really like chicken too much. I can eat it, but it's a toleration thing. But, dude, red meat and pork, I like better than I like chicken. But that doesn't mean it's right for you. You have to find out what's right for you. you gotta, you got to experiment here. Okay, it's, there's no fucking, nobody, I don't care who your personal trainer is, okay, I don't care who it is online, I don't give a fuck who it is. If he sits here and tells you, you see this, follow this right here, okay, and this works for everybody, universally, he's fucking full of shit, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, there's a girl, I'm not going to say her name, but she's a top girl in bodybuilding and she cannot eat chicken before she eats nothing but beef. I, I, I get it, man. I get it. it. This is an individual thing. It's all trial and error. For most people, beef makes them a little thicker in the stomach. They feel a little heavier. They can't deal with the, the fat content of beef. It's a, you know, the meat seems to not break down. But that depends on, it's not everybody. Mike Matarazzo used to eat ma massive amounts of beef. You know, he blamed that on his heart problem. Don't let me get started on that. You know what I mean? Come on. Alright? I mean, it was in his family and shit. And he taking all the steroids and then on top of the beef. And all, come on. Anyway. That's no diss. I love Mike. Rest his, rest his soul. But what I'm telling you is, he was a beef guy. I'm kind of a beef guy, you know? I mean, I, I, I do eat chicken. I do a lot of eggs. But I like beef. Beef seems to make me harder and, 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 mm. now, I'm going to get to something here. Here's a shoot you down, a lot of you motherfuckers. Here's a shoot you down, a lot of you momos, bro. I'm going to tell you, there's some of you who are not going to listen to me. All right? But stay the fuck away from sushi. Believe me. I know more than one person who has gotten sick from sushi. And my one friend caught a tapeworm from sushi. Oh my God. If you heard the story. Fucking eight feet of worm out of his ass. And he's pulling it like this and it snaps and it breaks back up. At first he told me he told his intestines were coming out of his ass. He wasn't feeling good for a while. You can't, raw fish is not made to be, dude, Evan Senapani's got a great video on this YouTube here. Look at the one where he's cooking the codfish, and you see the worms coming up out of the cod like this, and he's pulling them out, and he's even saying, well, if you cook it, it's fine. You know, if you cook it, I'm probably eating a lot of those worms. Yeah, but what about the people who are eating fucking raw fish? Fish is not meant to be eaten raw. Okay? Stay the fuck away from sushi. By the way, my friend, eight feet out of his ass, he went to the fucking hospital, had another eight feet in there. So you do the fucking math on that, bro. You do the math. That's 16 feet. He told me, he told me it was 18 feet total, but that's 16 feet. I don't know. Maybe there's another two feet. Who the fuck knows? But dude, not, fish is not meant to be eaten raw. Okay? Stay the fuck away from sushi. Go look for that Evan Senapani video. Watch him pulling the worms out of the fucking cod. Okay? There's live worms in cod. Especially if you get fresh cod. If it's frozen, I think that kills it. But I don't care, dude. I ain't eating that shit. Fuck that. I used to eat fish all the time. I can't eat that shit no more. Not anymore. Well, I was a kid, I'd fucking catch fish and eat them and stuff. You know, go, go fishing in a Long Island Sound. Well, Sheep's Head Bay in Brooklyn. I would go out there in Brooklyn, you know. I could tell you stories about that. You know, but anyway.
All right, anyway, listen, guys. I'm going to answer more of your questions. I'm going to do better videos. All right? Give me a fucking break. I know I say it all the time. You want a fucking story about my mother-in-law? Some guy's asking me to fucking, if I could repost that story of my mother-in-law with the, uh, you know, why are you giving a fucking money? Get a fucking bush fucking waxed. Anyway, this is Greg Valentino for Muscle Sport Magazine. I got more videos coming. Keep your questions coming. Uh, I'm going to start picking a subject, talking about life and everything else. I'll give you some good shit, okay? Stuff to even help you out, even with your life, with your girl and shit, because I'm, believe it or not, I'm pretty good with all this shit. But regardless, Muscle Sport Mag, stop fucking around. You fucking momos. Stay away from that sushi. Don't be a fucko. Stay away from that sushi. It's bad. It's not meant. No fucking raw fish, man. Go watch that fucking center party video. You'll fucking puke. You, you, you want to eat that shit cooked? Muscle sport, man. Fuck off.